Becky. I'm a geologist and I'm going to teach you about why some volcanoes are super explosive and some of them are not explosive. This is my assistant, Mo. She'll be helping me out and enjoy the video. I think a common question that people have about volcanoes is how come some of them are super explosive and really dangerous? Some of them you can go do a tour of on vacation and watch some of the lava flows go right by you. I was really curious about that when I first started studying geology and I wanted to share that information with anyone else who was curious. In order for me to help you understand volcanic eruptions, I need to explain plate tectonics. The theory of plate tectonics is the theory that the earth is made up of a bunch of different plates and these plates are made out of the lithosphere. A brittle layer of rock is broken up into different plates and these plates are essentially floating on top of the uppermost part of the mantle and that is called the asthenosphere. So the asthenosphere actually is not liquid, it is a solid in the same way that toothpaste is a solid, but you can still squeeze toothpaste through too. The convection in the mantle causes these plates to move around the earth. The theory of plate tectonics explains a lot of the earth's processes. It explains why we have volcanoes, it explains why we have different plate boundaries, and it explains why we have supercontinents like Pangaea have occurred in the past and they're gonna occur again in the future. So as these plates move around the earth, they form plate boundaries. Divergent, where they have the plate boundaries. <laughs> where the plates are moving away from each other. And then we have convergent boundaries where plates are converging. And then we have transform boundaries, which kind of go like this. These different types of boundaries are responsible for the different kinds of volcanoes and the different kinds of volcanic eruptions. So just take a second and think about what comes to your mind when I mention a volcano. Most of the time, you're probably imagining a big mountain that's exploding a bunch of red hot lava, a huge ash cloud. One of the more recent volcanic events you've probably heard of was the Kilauea volcano in 2018 in Hawaii that started to destroy a lot of people's homes in Hawaii. The earth is very complicated. There's several different types of volcanic eruptions, and I'm just gonna focus on these two extreme ends of it. Magma is molten rock beneath the earth's surface, and once it comes up, to the surface, we call it lava. The main factors responsible for the formation of magma are pressure, heat, and the concentration of gases. There are different types of magma, and that is because the earth is so complicated. We have three different types of magma. That is mafic, andesitic, and felsic. So the way that we separate the three types of magma is by their mineral composition, their temperature, and the presence of gases. All magma is made up of the same ingredients, but just in different concentrations. These ingredients are silicon dioxide, iron, magnesium, calcium, sodium, and potassium. Magma also has varying amounts of gases. The main gases I'm talking about are carbon dioxide and water. There can also be smaller concentrations of different gases like sulfur, fluorine, and chlorine. So not only does the mineral composition and the concentration of gases separate magma into different categories, but so does the temperature. Certain magmas have much higher temperature than other magmas. Before I get into talking about the different types of magma, I want to talk about silica. So silica, or the chemical name silicon dioxide, is the most abundant material in the Earth's crust. It is made up of the two elements, silicon and oxygen, which make up 46.6% and 27.7% of the Earth's crust. The most well-known form of silica would be quartz. The main ingredient of sand is actually quartz. So the sand in this jar, although it has a lot of other minerals in it, is mostly made up of silica. The frames in my glasses are also made of silica. The types of magma are partly defined by the percentage of silica present in them. Felsic magma has the highest amount of silica in it of all the magma types, 65% silica. Mafic magma has a percentage of 50% or less. Anacidic magma is in between felsic and mafic, somewhere in between 50 and 65%. Mafic magma has the highest percentage of magnesium, iron, and calcium. 
and the lowest percentage of sodium and potassium. Felsic magma is essentially mafic magma single twin sibling, lowest amount of magnesium, calcium, and iron, and the highest amount of sodium and potassium. So all these different factors of what makes up magma is really important. These help determine the viscosity of the magma. Very important in understanding how explosive a volcano will be. Viscosity is the resistance that a material has to how easily it flows. A material with low viscosity is going to flow much more easily than a material with high viscosity. Viscosity is affected by the factors I mentioned before, and that's the temperature, composition of the material, as well as the gas content. When I shake this can of soda, the dissolved gases in the soda are vaporized, causing more bubbles to explode when I open it. It's the same thing with magma. When magma has more bubbles in it, it's more explosive and vice versa. So I figured a good way to describe viscosity would be making a smoothie. But we're gonna pretend that this frozen fruit is silica. So we're gonna put some silica into the smoothie. <laughs> it's not coming out. I got my liquid and silica in there. You'll see is viscosity. You can definitely see it moves around like a liquid. So this represents a mafic magma because it has a lower viscosity, because it has less silica in it. So less silica, lower viscosity, less bananas, easier to pour. So now I'm gonna add more frozen fruit to the smoothie and that's going to represent a higher silica content in magma. So my next smoothie is gonna represent Felsic magma. And right away you can see it's not really pouring very easily out of here. That's because it has a very high viscosity. Now just imagine this being a magma and trying to escape out of the crust. It's obviously gonna be more explosive because it needs to work harder to get out of there. And here's my much watery, wa much more waterier smoothie right here. Lower viscosity. Low, high. I got some on my nose. Okay, so here's a little recap of the video. So we have plate tectonics, which is responsible for creating different types of plate boundaries. These plate boundaries form different circumstances under which magma forms. There are different types of magma. These are all dependent on these different plate boundaries. The type of magma with the most silica is felsic magma. When a magma has more silica in it, it becomes more viscous. Remember, viscosity is resistance to flow. So something that has higher viscosity ends up being more explosive. And usually the types of magma that are highly viscous also have higher gas content. Magma with higher gas content also is much more explosive. Mavic magma, on the other hand, has less silica in it and tends to be much less viscous. Therefore, it flows more easily and this is where we see effusive eruptions like the one shown earlier in the video of the clips of Kilauea in Hawaii. This is not to say that it's impossible for a mafic volcano to be explosive or impossible for a felsic or andesitic volcano to be effusive. The earth is something that's very hard to put into neat little boxes when it comes to explaining the processes. We are still learning new things every day about the earth and about volcanoes, but this is a great place to start when it comes to learning about the basics of volcanic eruptions.